Towards the end of yesterday's review of the 6800 XT, I took a look at the encoders and the differences between the 6800 XT, the 5700 XT, and also the RTX 3080. Now it was clear when we analyzed these in 4K, and I'll put this example up here again in 4K for you guys, that the center image was lacking detail. Now the colors, which we will talk about a bit later, that's not so much the issue here, it's more so the detail that you're getting out of this captured image, which was taken in OBS Streamlabs, which is a very popular program for streamers, especially if they're streaming at 60 FPS 1080p. However, we'll show this now in 4K since yesterday's video on my channel got stuck in processing and it looks like it's forever stuck in processing where I had to go back and re-upload that video in 1080p for it to work. And I don't know what's up with YouTube sometimes, the dramas that have followed my channel over the years do leave me scratching my head, but what can you do? but just keep going on. Anyhow, let's keep up with some comparisons between the image quality between the RTX 3080 and also the 6800 XT, where I've used an external capture device on an external PC using the same CPU encoding settings at 4K 60 FPS. Let the showdown begin. And starting out here with the first title, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is 4K on the highest settings preset. And what we saw here with the results from yesterday's review was at this resolution was these cards were performing pretty similar, where I think the 3080 only slightly edged out the 6800 XT. And then at 1440p, the 6800 XT edged out the 3080. So they're performing very similar in this title. But another thing is too, is that the image is actually looking very identical to my eyes, at least in terms of the picture quality. Now, one thing I will quickly say again is that we are using the same encoding settings on a separate PC with a 4K60 capture card from Corsair. And then we're using the CPU encoder at 4K60. So there may be some stuttering from left to right or vice versa. So one may look smoother than the other throughout the comparison but that's because it is a very CPU heavy encode at 4K 60 FPS. Do keep that in mind. But what we're seeing or what we should be seeing is the encoding settings will be exactly the same in terms of the raw image quality. So what you're seeing coming out of these two graphics cards from that HDMI port is going to be what you should be experiencing when you're playing this title. Now, another good thing about Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the benchmark itself. Since we're going from one card to another, from Nvidia to AMD and vice versa, it's good to see that this game is showing the same picture quality on both cards, which means that if you're going to play this game with one card or the other, and the FPS numbers that you see for this benchmark, it's going to say, okay, I'm playing this game, for instance, at 60 FPS 4K, I'm going to be getting the same experience on both cards, which is good if you're an end consumer, but this isn't the case, however, for this next game that we're gonna be pulling up here, and this is Dirt 5. Now, I'm actually gonna be scrapping this benchmark. I used it once in yesterday's review for the 6800 XT versus the 3080. And I just noticed that while I was benchmarking this, there was just massive areas of the map that were showing completely different amounts of shadows. And so for me personally watching this, I'm like, well, this isn't consistent. We're here now testing apples to oranges where we're actually benchmarking. Well, I, I like to use benchmarks that are consistent but watching this benchmark back there's not only a little bit of inconsistency in the car positioning and how they interact with each other but there's also a big inconsistency in parts of the map where the shadows display on certain cards for instance in this benchmark run that i did on the 3080 on the right versus the 6800 xt on the left we can see that well we'll get into it very soon that it pretty much just starts going really dark for the nvidia card and I guess processing a lot more shadows than it would on the Nvidia side, rather than processing that same amount of shadows on the AMD side, which can of course, if it's the wrong set of variables, hamper one card versus the other. Hence why when I saw this benchmark and watched it back closely, I'm actually going to be scrapping it from the uh, numbers. Though, if you guys are on a 4K monitor, feel free to pull this up and watch it at a higher bit rate than say 1080p because 
you'll then be able to see uh, some of the differences if they are there. I watched it back and in terms of the detail coming out of both these cards, very similar when we're using the same encoding settings. Unlike that comparison we did before, we were pretty much testing the NV encoder in Streamlabs versus the 6800 XT encoder in Streamlabs. And so hopefully AMD can update that in a few driver updates and give a bit more detail. But as it stands, the uh, 3080 encoder is giving out uh, more detail for the uh, same bit rate that's recorded at a high quality MP4 size in OBS Streamlabs. So closing out on Dirt 5, we tested this out on the same preset here on the ultra high in the settings menu itself using the in-game benchmark. But basically this game, unfortunately for me personally, is going to go from benchmark to the first real case of a trench mark. Though switching things up here for the last title, we are going with Horizon Zero Dawn. And this game actually looks really beautiful at 4K. If you guys uh, doing some 4K gaming, especially on OLED, where you can turn on HDR support with 10-bit, this game looks absolutely gorgeous. It's jaw-dropping when you get into it. Though this benchmark itself, it's good to see that we're getting an apples-to-apples -apples comparison like we are with Shadow of the Tomb Raider here, where the details look the same, the colors look the same, there's no different placements of shadows. The only difference, however, that you will see in this game is locations of NPCs or non-player characters. And so you'll see them throughout the benchmark, just different characters will be randomly walking around in different spots. But this shouldn't affect the FPS too much. You may see a variance of around one FPS to even two FPS, depending on how many runs you do. But that's generally when you see reviewers testing hardware, they will run benchmarks multiple times to weed out variants and then give you guys an average score. However, one dilemma I am having is that with the averaging out of benchmarks, which personally I do three runs and then I give the average of those three runs, I have sort of had a question to myself and I would love you guys, your feedback in the comments below. Would it technically be better to make sure the system is running properly first, making sure there's no bloatware or anything like that on the system, and then perhaps just do the first run and take that first run in that game? Because when you think about it, if someone's jumping into a game they're going to be playing that game for the first time and then going through the level. And I mean, depending on if they, okay, if they fail the mission or whatever, they restart the mission again, they will replay that same section. But for a lot of gamers, they're really playing that section only once. So that's sort of like the conflict I've been having with benchmarking at the moment. Is it more realistic just to do the first run and give you the results from that or go back and retest three different times? Do let us know in the comments section below what you guys think about that. So there it is with the image quality at 4K 60 FPS. Hopefully YouTube hasn't compressed this comparison to the point where it's a blurred out image. Hopefully there is a lot of detail still left in there so you guys can see it for yourselves. But what I did see was that there was no discernible difference between the two in terms of the raw colors and the image quality coming out this time around. The 6800 XT and the 3080 looked pretty much identical for what you were getting out, except for Dirt 5. And this was an important thing for me because I will be making a video uh, talking about differences between numbers when you see different benchmarks and whatnot. But this does show in real time that some benchmarks just aren't giving out apples to apples. And therefore, benchmarks like that, I'm gonna personally, I'm gonna scrap Dirt 5 from my benchmark suite after seeing that in today's test. Though, what we saw with the differences between the two, if you're an end user gamer, there's nothing to worry about. You're going to have a great experience if you can get your hands on a 6800 XT or a 3080. That's still an ongoing problem is supply. But if you're an end user gamer, you're going to be enjoying both these cards. That's what I said in the original review from yesterday, and I'm going to be standing by that going forward. Though the differences between the two cards, as I've said before, there's a $50 difference there. One's got 16 gigabytes of VRAM versus one having 6x and 10 gigabytes of VRAM, where if the games aren't limited by VRAM, then the 6x will do a better job at 4K, as we saw with the benchmark numbers. Though outside of gaming, if you guys want to know more about either of these cards, then I'll link yesterday's review for you right up here, and you can check that out. But with that aside, the image quality, it's a good thing to know that you're going to be getting a good experience out of both of these. And with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also, let us know in the comments section below. Did you like today's video? 
If not, just yeah, hit the dislike button and let us know why not. And the good thing about that is even a dislike helps us out on the algorithm with YouTube. So with that side, we've got a question of the day here, which comes from Blake2423. And they ask, I mean, you get the cards and us customers can't get them and you don't want to be a beta tester to help us out. I, as I said in my review yesterday, I have done enough of beta testing for 2020. There's been so much of it already and I am, I'm pretty tired, I'm pretty burnt out. And today's example of Dirt 5, especially in the benchmark mode, does show some worrying differences there, which I guess in ways would constitute beta testing. So, uh, and so speaking of us customers as well, um, I actually am a customer too. I do get review samples in, but I do actively partake in being a customer in the market, buying and selling things. Uh, for instance, I have, a 3080 that I bought. I've got another 3070 and 3080 that I'm buying for a challenge. And there is also, if there's a 6800 XT on pre-order that I can get, then I'll be ordering one of those as too. So I do feel like I like to uh, take a customer stance on products as much as I can. And if that's not good enough for you, Blake, then just hit that dislike button for us. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, then you know what to do, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.